So looking at the conflict economies of the Middle East and North Africa, particularly Iraq, Syria, Libya and Yemen, you see that these are really complex ecosystems in which you have all types of different economic activities taking place. Increasingly those are connected to violence and connected to the conflicts themselves. When we look at the Middle East and North Africa, traditionally the way that we have approached a lot of these issues is through the lens of identity. That now has started to change and part of what this project is trying to do is to say actually there are some economic motivations that are going on here. We need to pay a lot more attention to those and the reality on the ground of what the field work done by my colleagues here at Chatham House shows is that you cannot neglect um, those kinds of economic incentives that are there. Oftentimes there are narratives you hear, particularly in the West, sectarianism, ideological battles, you know, this, these kind of narratives. But when you're on the ground, you, sometimes they don't make sense. And you actually, you know, when you're driving through checkpoints or when you're seeing this armed group engaging with this armed group economically cooperating with each other, you start to realize there's more to the picture than the Sunni Shia sort of war in the region. And so that's not to say that the ideology is not, is, is isn't there, it is there, but studying the conflict economy as we have done in this report provides, I think, another layer of, another layer of nuance which is closer to our realities on the ground. What we see, uh, particularly from Western policymakers, is an overemphasis on trying to discern what's a formal economy, what's an informal economy, what's licit, what's illicit. But actually in these contexts, those lines are blurred. Equally, trying to focus on what's legal and illegal is also blurred and in some cases defined by one of the conflict actors or another. Well, the Western policy has, significant, uh, has a significant impact on the conflict economies of the Middle East in general and of Syria in particular. I'll give you an example. Uh, Western governments fund to a, significant, uh, to a significant extent the humanitarian aid effort of the United Nations in Syria. Now, because Damascus is the officially recognized government, the de jure government in Syria, the UN has to work with the Damascus government. So eventually what we end up with is that uh, Western money that is supposed to fund humanitarian effort has to go through um, Damascus, and Damascus has enough leverage and power to make sure that a lot of the uh, cronies, a lot of the individuals and institutions associated with the, uh, with the war effort um, benefit from these contracts. So you, you end up having money that is supposed to go to humanitarian aid, but is eventually being contracted to companies that are involved in the conflict. And in, a, in, in that way, if you want, that money helps feed the conflict economy rather than fighting it. So what the international players, what the policymakers really need to do is get a better understanding of the political economy of these conflicts, who makes money and how, and how that impacts the populations. And where we think this could be improved is often policymakers only think about what can be done punitively, sanctions, how can you cut this off, how can you cut that off. But actually, there needs to be more of an emphasis on promoting peaceful coexistence, finding ways to help people work together, and also it raises very difficult questions about the system that's trying to be created. Is it enough just to end violence, open fighting? What about the political system? If you just entrench an unfair, unequal system, it's likely that we're going to have future cycles of conflict. So I think these are the kinds of economic issues that policymakers need to understand and grapple with to really tackle the drivers of conflict economies in the Middle East and North Africa.